Okay, so if you recall in our first example, the function uh, we were looking at, uh, g of x, was this one, e to the power minus x. And for us to have access to this e, which is Euler's number, we need to import e from the math module like this. So we make an import of Euler's number e from the math module. So we say from math, import e. So that's what this first line does. It makes an import of of this. Is that clear? You understand how to do an import? Yes, sir. Okay, next, uh, we print what the value of E is. If it has been successfully imported, we should be able to see what the value is. And that's what we have here. So you can see that our import of E, uh, OLS number, has been done successfully. Next, we want to create a, this function, a lambda for this particular function, g of x is equal to e to the power minus x. So in that case, you're going to say g, which is a function which we have to use in this fixed point iteration, is going to be equal, uh, then equals to, we say lambda, then the variable which we are using in this case is just x, and uh, the function, exp the expression for the function is e uh, to the power minus x, which is this bit here, and when you run that, that's what we get. So this is a function which we need if we're going to do fixed point iteration. The next thing we do is we try to create a function called fixed point iteration using this the what, what we did with the fixed point thing. Okay. Now, then we start by defining. We're telling Python that we want to create a function called fixed point iteration. So you start with def. That's what you do. Then next you uh, state the name of the function. Then after that. For this thing to work, remember, for fixed point iteration to work, we need to have a function g. Okay? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Then, after having a function g, we also need to have a starting point where we are starting from. Then, as we are doing this whole thing which we are doing, uh, of course, there is going to be a need for a tolerance. We need to find a way of stopping. We want to stop if the values of x, x1 and x2, if there's this clause. So if the values of x are less than 1 times 10 to the power minus, the difference between the values is less than 1 times 10 to the power minus 20, then we want to stop. So this is what we are setting as the default tolerance. So we are sure by the time this is done, we are sure that what we have is the correct value of x. But you also need to set a maximum number of iterations. So we are setting the maximum number of iterations to 200. Say, if this thing is going to go on happening, then it should be 200. If it reaches 200 and beyond, then we know that the function g which we have used is not the correct one. And we know how to find out which correct function of g is. If you, are, if you create a function, you come up with a function of g, uh, the next thing you have to do is you, 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 you're looking for what this value of G is at some particular spot, around some particular spot, okay? Then you, you create your G, but your G should be able to lead you towards a fixed point. So if it doesn't lead you towards a fixed point, if it goes away, then the differences between the values is going to increase. It will never be this. Then if you continue running, at the end of the day, the number of iterations is going to do will be more than 200. If that happens, then our function should come to a stop. Okay, so basically this is what you're saying. What well, This tolerance has already been set. Say the difference between the values of uh, G should be less than this much. And also this bit here also has already been said, say we only want to do this up to a maximum of 200. After that, we want to kind of explain what our function does. So, uh, in this case, I'll do this. Okay. Uh, so, this is what you have here. This is an explanation. All this which you have here, which you have put in these triple quotes, this is what is called the documentation string. So, this is an explanation of what your function does. So, what does it do? Approximate the solution of the equation x is equal to g of x starting with initial guess x naught input parameters g the iteration function input as a function 
uh, x naught, the initial guess value for the fixed point, then tor the tolerance, max iter, the maximum number of iterations, which is what we have here. So this is the iteration function, your initial guess value, this is the tolerance, and that's the maximum number of iterations. So we explain what these things are. So basically, if you're going to write your function, that's the way you're supposed to do it. What are we supposed to, what will be the outputs of our particular function? In this case, we are supposed to get, our output is going to be uh, x new, the approximate value of the fixed point, then k, the number of iterations which it has run, then error, the error in the approximation. So what we do, after we do this, the next thing we do is, we get this value here, okay? Remember what we are doing. We get a value of x, we put it in x, then we get something out. Are we clear? We get this value of x naught. We put it in this function g of x. We get another value of x out. Are we clear? That's what you're doing. The value of x we get out, we put it back in. Then it gives us another value of x. So what we are doing here is the following. Our x naught, we store it as x odd. Okay? After we get our x naught, your initial guess value, we, we store this initial guess value as x odd. Then, since we have to repeat this a certain number of times, we want to repeat this up to a maximum of 200 max item. If you're going to repeat something a set up to a certain up to a known number of times, if you're going to do a repetition of something for a certain known number of times, you're going to say, oh, I'll do this up to a maximum of 200 times. If that's what you're going to do, then that is an opportunity for you to use for you to use a follow-up in this case. Okay? So you're saying uh, for k in range uh, max item. So up to max, I think you can, you can even put uh, starting from one, the first iteration, you can do this. One, two, max item, up to 200. So you want one all the way up to 200 or less than that, because I think 200 will not be there. It start from zero. Or oh, let's do this, yeah. Yeah, sorry, one. One up to whatever it is. Is this clear? So this is how, this is going to produce a list from one up to one something. Uh, one zero, one, one nine nine, but one nine nine is not going to be 200. So I think we need to change something up here. Just a minute. We need to change. If I want 200 and I'm using it in a, in a range function, I will need to make it 201 so that it can actually go up to 200. Okay. Are we clear? Yes, sir. So our x naught, our guess value, that's what you've stored as x, as x odd. The in our function g, that's where we put our x odd. When we put our x odd, we're going to get a new value of x. That's what's according x new. Okay, or we can say old x. Uh, whether I, if you say old x, I don't. Which one is better, old x or or x odd? Uh, which? It's okay, if it's x odd. New x. Okay, let's say old x. Uh, the new x. New x. Like this. Then here, old x. Old x like that. So we put in odd x in this fun particular function g, then we're going to get ourselves new x. Then we work out the difference between the new x and the new odd, and this difference is going to be either positive or negative. Are we clear? Yes, sir. When you work out the difference, because you don't know whether it's moving this side or the other side, you what you have is just a guess value. Okay. So if your your new x is larger than your old x, when you work out this difference, a new x minus x old, you're going to get a positive error. If your new x is less than the old x, you're going to get a negative error, right? 
So what we want ourselves is an error which is not positive. So we give this difference to this function called absolute value. So the absolute value of any of a negative number is a positive number. So we give this difference. We do, when we work out this difference, we work, give it to this particular function called absol ABS, absolute value. I hope you remember this particular function from the math yes, module. Uh, no, no, from it's actually part of the Python functions, which come prepared with Python. Okay, so when we work out this absolute value, whatever the difference is in this particular case, that's what we're going to store as the error. Now, when you have your, you have calculated the error, which is the difference between the new value of x and the odd value of x, you want to check if your error is less than the tolerance. This tolerance, which I've set here, you want to check if your error is less than the tolerance. If the error turns out to be less than the tolerance, then you want to stop. Are we clear? Yes, sir. If the error turns out to be less than the tolerance, then you want to stop and you want to come out of the this break, which this break uh, keyword here. This is what's going to make you come out of the for loop. So you use it inside the for loop so that you can immediately come out of a, of, of, of a loop. You use it inside the loop so that you come out of a loop if a particular condition is is met. So in this case, if our error is less than is smaller than the tolerance then we want to stop whatever we are doing and we want to come out is that clear yes sir. so we we'll only come out if our tolerance our error is less than the tolerance otherwise if that's not if the error is larger than the tolerance will not come out so the only thing we're going to do is we're going to make our new x become the old x We will make a change here. New x is now going to become old x. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Then, after new x becomes old x, that's okay. We will also check if uh, what is we'll check if the number of iterations is equals to max item. If this whole th because this whole thing will continue and the, the value of k will keep on changing, okay? As we keep on doing this, the value of k will keep on changing from one to two to three to four. So if k becomes equal to max iter, then we'll print out a message say maximum number of iteration has been exceeded. So this whole thing will end. This for loop will end. But if it doesn't end, your value of x which you got from here will now become the new value of x odd then you're going to use it back here when x odd you put it back here then it will give, in, give you a new x uh, new, uh, new x then you work out the difference between new x and x odd you get the error then you check if the error is less than the tolerance if it's not you continue you make your new x becomes x. so this process is going to continue and it's going to continue like that until it comes to an end, either because the tolerance is less than, the error is less than the tolerance, or when it comes to the end because the rope has reached the end. Are we clear? Yes, sir. So, once that's done, then we're going to get our new value. We're going to return our new x, our new x, new x, uh, the number of iterations and the error so that's basically how this process is going to work is it clear yes sir okay so uh here let me change this to new x so we run this Okay, so in this case, we already have our G, if you remember. Our G is what you've created here. This is our, our function G, e to the power minus x, like that. If we start with our x naught, a guess value of x, which is equal to 0 
here so fixed point iteration g uh x naught 0 0.5 when you do this this is what we get we get this much and the number of times it has run it has run 200 times and this is how much error has been put there so we can increase we can try to increase the number of iterations let's say 500 we see how many times it runs even a thousand yeah so it can run much much more let me so it's coming to an end because the number of iterations is being meant so if we reduce the other option will be to reduce the tolerance yeah let's reduce the tolerance because the tolerance i think is too high so if we reduce the tolerance to 10 to the power let's say 15 or 16 if we do that so this is what we get uh if i increase this is this how much this is 9000 right iterations let me increase this to 100,000 let me see how far it goes. Okay. So it's stopping because of the iterations. I think let's reduce this bit. Okay. If we reduce the total runs, then it runs only this many times. In this case, it runs only 38 times and this is how much the error is so i think it was running too much because of uh the tolerance which you said if you put the tolerance at 15 what do we get yeah so here we are so it runs 58 times and this is the error so it's not stopping because of uh it's stopping because it, the tolerance we have set has been met. If you look at what uh, what we have at the at, what, what did we have as a value in the notes? This should match it. Do you have your notes? Did you download them? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For the notes. Yeah. Does it match? Let's check. Are you getting a match? Um, So as we in the notes, we went up to X11. So I'll share something. I'll sh uh, so here we have, what we have is uh, this as the answer, the fixed point, uh, 0 0.56714290409735. That's what you have. If I share the notes, you will see that it's very consistent with what you have. So for X11, we've got 0 0.56721771963. In this case, we only went up to 11 times doing it by hand, but you can see it's at 0 0.567. In our, with our thing here, it's also at 0 0.567 here. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's also at 0 0.567. So you can see that it works. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Yeah, so that's how you use this fixed point iteration to get a value 
then you put it back you you get a value from somewhere then this value which you've got you you put it in a function then this function spits out some something some value then you get that value which is being spit out you use it you work out a difference then after you work out a difference you use the new value become you, you switch the new value becomes the old value then you do this thing again and again and again and again and again so that you can reach a value of x which does not change why we are doing this is because as much as this is for one function we the next step of thing which we are going to be doing which involves solutions of nonlinear equations we're going to be solving multiple equations but using the same idea are we clear yes sir yeah we're going to be solving for multiple equations but we're going to be using exactly the same idea okay so uh so that is for our, our function g which is uh e to the power minus x there was another function which we used uh, for the second example, one minus x to the power of one minus x x squared divided by four, uh, which is uh, where are those notes? Just a minute. We did another example. Mm, just a minute. This one, gx is equal to one minus x squared divided by four in the interval zero comma one. So of course we had to find out if this particular function in this particular interval is going to give us, is going to converge. So we worked out a derivative here of this particular function, which we found out to be, uh, what is minus x to the power two. So there's an error here, minus x to the power two. Then we chose a value between zero and one we put it in this particular thing then we found a value which is less than one then we got an absolute value of this particular thing so which is basically less than one so that's how we got convinced that okay this particular function g of x is going to give us a fixed point in this particular interval zero comma one then after that we proceeded to start working out the fixed point with this expression uh x k plus one is equals to one minus x k squared divided by 4 then we started with x not equals to 0 0.5 when we did that we ended up with we ended up somewhere at x uh, at x10 this is when we're doing it by hand we ended up at x10 equals to 0 0.82838 like this this thing here okay so the same business which you have there that's what you're going to do in this particular case with this <coughs> function here so we're going to create a lambda function for the same then we're going to use our fixed point iteration function which we have just come up with here so uh here lambda g g of x is equal to one minus x squared divided by four so we create our lambda g in this case g is equal to lambda x one minus x squared divided by four so this is our function then with this particular function we start our fixed point fixed point iteration the function is g our starting value is x naught is equal to 0 0.5. When you do this, this is what we get. We get ourselves 0 0.82842712486619. And of course, it runs 40 times, and this is how much the error is. In our case, we just did it for only 10 times, but here you can see it runs 40 times, and this is how much error you get. 0 0.828. So if you look at what we had, there was a small mistake in our thing, but things are very consistent. 0 0.828. The first three digits are spot on with us doing it only up to 10, decim uh, up to three decimal places. Is that clear? With what we have? Yes, and this here? Yes, sir. Yeah. So basically that's how you use this whole idea of fixed point iteration to find a fixed value. This whole idea is going to be extended because the next thing we're going to be try, we'll try to do is we'll try to solve systems of linear equation using fixed point iteration. But when you, you, when you extend the idea to these systems of linear equation, there's something what is called, it's called a Jacobi method and also there's something called uh, 
a Gaussi Seido iteration, but basically we are going to basically in principle it's the same thing which we have just done here. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Okay, so basically that's what I wanted us to talk about. Create a Python program, which is what we have done here. Uh, the notes, will be, this the PDF of this particular notebook will be uploaded to the Moodle. I will also share the PDF on the WhatsApp group for those people who are not able to attend. So basically that's the idea there. Of course, there's also been a video recording, but over the past week I've struggled with data, so I was not able to literally upload any good number of videos. But I'll try to do that today since we have bought a bit of data. Okay, any questions? On how we have done... Uh, no, sir. Okay. I think everything is clear. If it's clear, that's good. I just have to go through again. Okay, okay, fine, fine. That's good. Okay. All right. So, see you. We're meeting. Are we supposed to be? I don't know if you're going to meet tomorrow, but because I'm supposed to. Anyway, I'll see. I'll see. I'll see. Since people are also still celebrating, okay. so so maybe today they are celebrating. Tomorrow things maybe will start to come back a bit, but we'll see. Okay. So, see you. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Just.